Well, it's been a while since I did any kind of review on the bike, and I'm going to wait till I got uh, a little bit more. Maybe I got about 7,000 on it now, but and I'm very happy with it. But in the meantime, I wanted to just run over a couple few things that I've done lately and uh, just give you my thoughts. It'll be quick and it'll be easy, and we'll go on from there. What I'm trying to accomplish here is just to run through a few things and changes I've made to the bike. Um, additional things I've bought. Uh, nothing too serious. Uh, so this is kind of a mishmash. But the most important change I made to the motorcycle, and the one I'm really, really, really pleased with, is the addition of the tech cam and the 16-tooth uh, front sprocket and chain to go with that. The Himalayan is a really, really well-balanced motorcycle. Uh, brakes could be a little bit stronger, but everything matches. There's a, a lot of move to get more power, but I think that people would find they have clutch problems and they would have braking problems and etc. And as it is, it's such a tractor that, you know, you get stuck, you stop on a hill or whatever, you hardly have to worry about inducing wheel spin or controlling the clutch and feathering it in or anything. It just tractors along. It's nothing too exciting, but uh, it makes those areas that give you some trepidation go, go actually pretty easy. But what it lacks is the top end. Um, 70, 75 miles an hour, I've done it, and I've done it for extended periods of time, but it's uncomfortable. It's wound up, um, and it feels buzzy, and it feels strained, and it probably is. And it really eats fuel uh, rapidly. And it, when it comes to passing, uh, if you you know you get slowed down, you got somebody going 65 in front of you, it'll do it, but it takes you like all day to hit 83, and that's about the end of it. So when uh, I had a piston problem up in... North Carolina, which was totally unrelated to the motorcycle. I had to replace the piston and the cylinder. I thought for a while about going to the big board kits, but I opted to standard go back with the standard piston and cylinder. And when I did, I looked into it. I ordered the Tech Cam and a 16-tooth front sprocket. The Tech Cam, if you look at their charts, runs about a 20% horsepower uh, and torque increase fairly strongly across the board. You're putting, if I calculated it right, I may have wrong in my head there, about a 16 foot, uh, 16 per, or 6 percent, I'm sorry, load increase going to the higher sprocket. So it's thought that it should maintain its bottom end pull while lowering the RPM at the top end and giving you the the torque and power to um, to run that longer, that bigger sprocket on the front end. And that's exactly what I found. The changeover took, uh, well, it was integrated with me changing the cylinder and piston, but I think I could probably change a uh, stock cam to a tech cam in about four hours. Um, and then you're gonna change the sprocket and the chain. Yeah, probably four, four and a half hours in total. It's not a big deal. I'm running around the country, if somebody wants to do this, let me know. I'll join them. Uh, <laughs> I got. I, hopefully, I've got nothing to do in life after a month or so. Anyway, but travel on my Himalayan. But I will say that it, it's done everything that I thought it would. Uh, it pulls well off the line. I do wish I'd known I was going to do this in advance. I would have done, you know side-by-side -side stage comparisons and all of that, but there's no doubt it's it's not lacking any power up the line, but it really shines when you're going 70, 75 miles an hour and it's only turning like 5,400 RPM instead of wound up closer to its, you know, 6,500 RPM red line. Uh, and very notably, it has power to pass. You know, you've been going like 70 and somebody's running a little bit slower. It's no problem to crank the throttle and just cruise right on around them. So I cannot recommend it enough. I will say that I believe it idles a lot smoother. I have not put in the booster plug or opened up the exhaust or the intake or any of that. This is a strict cam change uh, along with a larger sprocket. And uh, I could not be happier with it. 
So let's uh, talk about the rest of the items that have been done. I'm going to be packing up everything, selling the house and moving out. So I'm going to be extensively on the road. So one of the first things I put on this was a little simple two two wire hook up alarm system, but uh, it's got adjustable sensitivity. I so you can't even you can't even open one of the cases without setting it off, and it is nasty loud. So I recommend that one strongly. Uh, it has this little keyless remote thing turned on and off, and we'll take a look at that. Luggage and storage, of course, if I'm going to take my whole life on the road is going to be an issue. So these Wild Heart, these were on when I did the review before, but I'll say these have really, really held up well. I know there are like, you know, $400 versions of these things uh, in this neoprene and folding top. And these have stayed dry. The bike's fallen on them. Uh, they've taken all kinds of abuse. They clean easily. I can't say enough. I don't know why why anybody would spend more i don't remember how much they are they weren't very much really they were sort of the cheapos but uh they work great solid easy to mount and i've had no problem whatsoever with them and you know, on top of the uh wild heart bags i had this rock brothers waterproof bag this is a 60 liter bag i've got all my camping stuff in here i'm going to review the hammock system later i'm really pleased with it but we're gonna that that deserves a completely separate review this straps on nicely it's you know it's just sitting here now but it does go get completely out of your way um, and uh, provides a lot of comfort and it's completely waterproof I've, I've had it in plenty of stormy type conditions now so it's it's worked well up front I wanted to add a little room and um, do some battery charging stations and maybe snacks easily accessible stuff here look at these stand sport uh, saddlebags here this was a set that went up and over it's supposed to go back in the back the small saddlebag but i just cut them cut them loose and laced them onto here um, they seem to fit the bike real well i put some coreplast uh, sign material in here to shape them out and it's uh, i think I'm, I'm very happy with that i also got this little uh, tank bag that I'm not happy with that I'm not gonna put the link up there because I think it's sort of cheaply built and too small <laughs> but we'll let that one go uh, let's take a look at some of the other stuff we've bought just for the bike and for the trip in general even after you get rid of the rotten initial battery in the Himalayan there's always a chance you'll leave something on or have a hard time starting it and run the battery down so this little jump box has been a lifesaver i've had this through several motorcycles now this will start a car easily and it's as you can see it's not very big it's also a good power bank if you need to charge any of your things although you know you want to save it for firing up your motorcycle or being a hero and saving the neighbor's car but it's so small they're so inexpensive I could, this one i've had long enough that i don't have a link for it but i've linked one that's very very similar um, and i really really recommend it for anybody being out in the middle of nowhere because AAA is not going to come rescue you in the backwoods. If you're going to go out riding your Himalayan anywhere, um, you're going to be subject to sharp rocks, things like that. You need to be able to change a tire um, on the road. So a patch kit is one thing, but this is about the third uh, little mini compressor I've gone through and this one has lasted really well. In fact, I use it uh, fairly regularly check my car which seems to have a leak to it um, but it's got a nice long cord it's fully adjustable you can set your preset your pressure limits and it's nice if you're going off road a lot of times you may want to air down your tires and have a way to bring them back up so I really recommend carrying one of these I mean we don't need to carry the whole world but there's certain things that you're going to find really really useful and this is certainly one of them and last but not least of things that I've purchased for the bike is this little Garmin InReach Mini. I really wasn't too into getting one of these for a while. They are they are not inexpensive by any means. And you have a subscription that goes along with it. And then if you want to dare use the SOS function, it's a good idea. You have a insurance set up with them so that you don't have to pay for the helicopters and everything. However, my wife and my girlfriend, yeah, you heard it. Uh, they uh, both insisted, as did my family, that I get this. This is a little satellite 
communicator pager. It can send out pre-programmed texts. Uh, five of them you can pre-program. And then using your phone, you can download new, new texts to them and send them out. Uh, there is some limitation, but with about a $25 plan, it's, it's fairly useful. I mean, you're not going to chat away all night or anything. However, um, it does get out, and it gets out well. I've, I've used it in areas where there's certainly no coverage by any other means, cell phone or, or uh, Wi-Fi, certainly nothing. And um, it's a little bit of a good peace of mind. When I had the engine kind of half go to pieces on me in the middle of freaking nowhere, and I didn't know how far it was going to take me back to civilization, it was nice to know I had it. Uh, if nothing else, to let people know where you are. So I, I recommend it. It's, uh, like I said, sending messages is like writing the Constitution on an old Nokia candy bar phone, but, but uh, it's doable. You'll be reading the manual when you, when you use it. <laughs> but, uh, I, uh, I, I'm glad I've got this. It's a, it's a great peace of mind, especially since I'll be traveling all over the country. And uh, God knows where, and hopefully exactly that, God knows where. So that's about the that's about the roundup for now. I just wanted to run down some of the things we had and some of the things I I would recommend. Uh, like I said, I would skip over that little junky uh, uh, tank bag. <laughs> Sorry, and uh, we'll uh, look at look at that. I'm probably going to get a tank bag on there, but I've got to find the right one. So so thanks for joining me in this little yak fest. Um, I hope that you know some of these have given you some ideas. I want to review uh, the hammock sleeping system by itself later. Uh, I also got some wearable armor, which the jury's still out on. I, I think I like it. Um, it's just standalone on mesh so that you can wear lighter clothes and you can also wear heavier clothes that aren't specifically motorcycle. So anyway, we'll we'll take a look at those in a separate review. So you know, like, subscribe, all of that good junky, real stuff, and uh, I hope to see you out on the road.